ik zit in Tivoli Vredeburg met uh, Paul van de band Mute Met. Vanavond treden ze hier op. Paul, how are you? I'm great. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. I'm very hot. Het is uh, 29 uh, augustus vandaag en het is bloedheet. So I'm sweating my ass off. Really. Wow, I'm kind of chilly actually. Yeah, you're this good. Is, this, is a, this is a nice spring day in New Orleans. Is it a coincidence? Isn't like this is a historic day? Is the hottest day ever recorded? No, and I don't think so. No, it's not. That's just the rumor. That's just what they're telling us, so that we can feel special that we brought that yeah, from New Orleans. Yeah. Okay. I think that's it. All right, it's well, that's what I'm gonna believe. I like that legend better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's good having you. You're performing tonight in Utrecht. Last year you played Melkweg in Amsterdam, but I want to talk about the time before that because it took like nine years for you guys to come to Europe. <laughs> Why? <laughs> What's wrong with Europe? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, quite honestly, it was so long ago. Yeah, we, we came to Europe, it was in 07, quite a few times. Yeah, it just felt like it didn't happen. So, I can tell you this, our last gig that we played in Europe in 07 was a nightmare gig that our label put together and we were opening for a band called The Used, mm -hmm. which is probably a ticket we should not have been on. The Used is a very heavy band, uh, for those who don't know, and, um, and at the time they were doing a private party for their fans um, in London. There shouldn't have been an opening band on that particular night, but they just thought it would be a good idea to put us there. So this was the used most fanatical fans in for a private party, wanting to see their band, and then here comes oh, little yeah. old Mute Math, and um, didn't go well, man. <laughs> didn't go well at all. We pretty much got heckled the whole time, and they were very excited when we left the stage. They were applauding at the end oh, that really? we were finally <laughs> done. Um, but yeah, so that was the last gig that we played in Europe. So it kind of left a bad taste in our mouth. And so I guess we just weren't excited to come back yeah. uh, for at least a while. But now it's been really fun. We're and now you're time. here like for the second time in like one and a half year. That's right. And so, we just know don't open for the used. That's yeah. all we come over here. Lesson learned. <laughs> Lesson learned. And how does it work as, an, as a singer, as a band, when a crowd is off? Do you have like a couple of tricks? So, okay, they're not responding very well or they're not, you know, going crazy. I'll do this song or I'll do this move or... Yeah, I had one trick and I used it that night with, with the used. Um, <laughs> uh, I just do this little handstand on my keyboard. It's like, uh -huh. usually get a nice rise out of the crowd. And so I was like, all right, we'll get to that part of the show. And I went ahead and did it, I planned it. And I swear I heard someone heckle me right from the balcony, right? On the side of the stage. And he goes, why don't you go back to gymnastics class, you queer? <laughs> I heard it very, very clearly. Wow. Just totally heckled that. Man. My, my best move. Yeah. Just so when you're doing that tonight, we know <laughs> the crowd is not doing very well in your opinion. <laughs> is there a big difference between playing in the States and in Europe? Um, yeah, um, absolutely. I think, um, I think whatever country you go to, there's, there's usually a different, different feeling. Um, sometimes it's just the songs. It's amazing how regionally different parts of the catalog, mm -hmm. if you will, um, connect or w what regions. Um, I remember when we went to India, we have this ballad um, called You Are Mine, and which we usually throw in the middle of the set just to bring mm -hmm. it down. And that wound up being like the biggest song. We, we probably should have closed the show with that song. And the, yeah, the crowd took that one over. It was like, oh wow, I guess we, we learned that people really liked that song in India. What is the song in Europe? Well, in Europe, in Europe, it's probably more spotlight, actually. There was, um, I guess there was a few people who, who found out about it through the movie Twilight. We were on that soundtrack back in 09. And so um, spotlight was a little more, spotlight wasn't a big thing in the States. Okay. Uh, so you're now uh, touring Europe and you're a headline and doing a headline tour in the States as well. That's right. Uh, I want to talk about, I think a month ago, the statement on your Facebook page. Yeah, that's a, a that was very the toughest statement I had to make. That was that was that was a little that was a little challenging. Yeah, it was tough for all the fans as well. Yeah, and that's what made it tough because I, yeah. I knew how difficult it was going to be for a lot of fans to hear that um, right when we we're putting out a new album and getting ready to hit the road. So yeah, it was it was a challenging summer. What, we're what pushing. happened? Well, I, I can't. I, I can't divulge the details. I mean, I, with, with respect to Darren, I mean, he just, he wanted to be out and I, I respect that. And um, 
and that's it. And we're moving forward. Um, so you'll have to ask Darren if you really want to know. So, yeah. um, but yeah, no, I, I was, I, I was, I was in shock. And I was panicked for a while. Obviously, we weren't sure if we were going to just have to cancel everything. Yeah. This album was not going to see the light of day, or that was it. And called a few drummers, trying to figure out if it was even possible to. I mean, that's a those are big but, shoes to fill but before, for any drummer. Before, before you you fill up the shoes, I mean, was was it your call? What were you sitting in your kitchen back home and thinking? Okay, are we done? Are we? Absolutely. postponing the tour uh, absolutely who do, who do you call how does a, a big thing like that work um it was a lot of tough conversations with our manager and some of the the, the agents and promoters and trying to figure out if is there a solution to be had can we and is there a drummer is there a drummer that can pull this off in the short amount of time to learn a lot of music yeah. um most drummers who have the ability to even come close to covering for Darren are usually booked years out. You know, they're not just sitting around waiting for a gig. And um, so it was challenging, yeah. Um, but the stars had aligned for a particular friend of mine who I had played with years ago. Just on a whim, we, we called him to see if he might be interested, might be available. And he was just fashioning his life to get back into music. It's what he wanted to do. He had taken a break from it for a while. Coincidentally, this is the drummer that when Darren originally moved to New Orleans, mm -hmm. Darren came in to fill in for because okay. this guy was, he, yeah. he needed a break. Um, but it just so happens Hutch, who is, who is the guy who's here to be playing drums uh, for the rest of the year with us. Um, fantastic drummer from New Orleans and um, he was hungry for it. He, he wanted to do it. It was like an opportunity. And it was sort of a redemptive thing. Where I brought is like, this is an opportunity. Do you want mm -hmm. this? This is big shoes to fill. Because he was I, like, absolutely. I remember you saying in the statement that, that this, he's the only guy you want to do this with. I knew he had the ability. I yeah. just didn't know if he'd be available yeah. or wanted to do it. And, and so what the if, scrutiny and the criticism that was going to come with, you know, yeah. whoever's going to fill in for Darren. So what, what if, if he said no? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know, man. No. I wasn't sure. We would have probably had to cancel, quite honestly, because yeah. I wasn't finding anyone else. What is it like? Because there were a lot of changes in the band the last couple of years. What, what keeps you going? I can imagine you just saying, all right, I'm done. If this, all this shit, is, is, that's what we say in the Netflix, is going on, um, I'm done. Right. And honestly, that thought had crossed my mind. But at the end of the day, I mean, I love what I do. Um, I love getting to play in this band. I love the music that we've created over, you know, 15 years. I'm really proud of it. And especially this new album. Mm -hmm. That's what really kept me going at the end of the day is, is the work that we did, that we poured our lives into for the past year. But really, it's been five years in the making, but especially the past year, this Play Dead album. It's a collection of songs I really believe in. And... Um, I was pretty hell-bent to just wanting to take this out on the road. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to call it. I just really did. At the end of the day, that's what I, that's what I settled with myself, that no, I'll do whatever it takes to try to keep this thing going um, and give this album a chance. So that's why we're here. And, and thankfully to the guys in the band who've been working their asses off. Mm -hmm. to, I mean, Darren, just not a drummer, just a contributor to the band mm -hmm. creatively, I mean, left quite a void. Um, but I've, I've been really taken back watching all the guys on our team and in the band just work even harder to fill in that void to, yeah. to make sure we can keep going. M me personally, and I mean all the fans are so happy that you're, that you're doing this, Thank you. Thank doing you the so tour. Thank you so much. Yeah, the response, a lot of the positive responses, which I, I, I was quite surprised at, um, have just been awesome so thank you guys when i get like a negative uh, comment or something on my you know instagram or something i feel like mm, oh i'm i want to reply is it something you have as well no not not for this um i because i understand it all because i felt the same way when when i was processing the news and and quite as i'm writing the statement having lived 
in this new age of YouTube comments and online, you know, just scrutiny, um, I was I was imagining all the negative comments that were going to come, and I was already starting to process it and try to cope with it. It's like I just know what people are going to say. This is, um, and quite honestly, some of the worst things I had thought of, uh, no one has said yet, or at least in my face, they might be thinking it, but at least uh, people were showing some restraint and feeling like they don't have to tell me that and just be mean. Um, which I'm thankful for. Yeah. And I'm not scouring comments either. I'm not like, mm -hmm. um, I've, I've seen a few of the things I, I think, um, but for the most part, what I've seen, which I'm thankful for, is it's been positive. Yeah, now you're on stage and I know people tonight as well are coming to the show and they're like, mm, okay, let's see what, what, what the vibe will be. It does kind of feel like we're auditioning yeah, for yeah, our yeah. fans again. <laughs> or, that's you know, crazy, trying, right? Um, yeah, it, it, but I get it. Um, and, and we're up for the challenge, quite honestly, and so is Hutch. I mean, he's invigorated, but he's, he was like, he, he wants to be, yeah, come check it out, you know? Yeah. If, if you're gonna yell out that I suck, go ahead. We want Darren back, go ahead, yell it, it's okay. We're gonna try to make this thing all right for you guys. Yeah. And, um, and his attitude has been incredible. I mean, what he was doing for the past 15 years before he stepped back into playing drums, he's been a paramedic in New Orleans. Oh, really? Uh, so a first responder, I mean, an everyday hero. I mean, this guy is, is in the thick mm -hmm. of life and death situations. And so when I was trying to explain to him some of the, the criticism he might be up against with, with, you know, Darren is a beloved figure in our band and him not being there and someone else stepping in is, is, could piss some people yeah. off. Um, and he's like, man. It's all right, man. We're ready. All we're, gonna, we're just gonna go hug some people. Just let them know it's gonna be all right. We'll, we'll apply. Uh, we'll bring out the pads. We'll we'll shock those who uh, their heart stops. Yeah. And you have extra security. We have extra security. <laughs> Anyone goes down. Yeah. He's he's taking care of us on a lot of levels right now. Yeah. So you you, you said earlier that the new album that's coming out in like two, one like ten days, right? Yeah, September 8th. Are we 10 days away? Yeah. What's, so, what's the main message? What's the story that you want to tell? Well, the main message is the idea of life after death. That's what this whole album is about. In the face of decomposition and facing an end of some chapter, or even, you know, whether from literal life, mm -hmm. death, or to just the death of certain eras of our lives, you know, what we do, how to face that. And this whole album is trying to celebrate those moments and believing, even if it's against belief sometimes, that there is life to be had. There is, there is a sliver of light, even in the, the darkest of, of situations. So, and it's 10 songs that I think I'm, I'm looking at this from all different angles. Mm -hmm. um, from song one that starts with kind of celebrating the life of my grandfather it was a huge inspiration to me and kind of set the mantra for my life to um, how I look at the life of my daughter and, and myself and how I'm coping with this. This is the first record I've made now that I'm 40 years old. Mm -hmm. And so I'm at this certain turning point in life. And, um, and so as I'm saying, we're singing about all this stuff and now it's like, all right, now we're facing it on a new level, just yep. just within our band. It's kind of ironic. Yeah, so it's like, what are you gonna do? All right, were well, you gonna put your money where your mouth is, or what? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, no, we're gonna we're gonna sing these songs, and now it means even more. Um, so which, we, which song fits the best with this situation? Well, I mean, I mean, stroll on the idea of just pushing for evolution. Um, I mean, there's lines throughout the whole album, uh, the feeling of this moment could be all we have. There may not be anything later on. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly when we started this new year, I mean, I would have never thought all of a sudden reality would have changed within our band as, as abruptly as it did. But it made me so much more appreciative for what we do have and, and for the guys who are willing to play these shows. I don't know if this is our last Meet Math album. I don't know if this will be our last tour that we do this year. Um, and, but it, and, and the good of that is it forces me to just enjoy the present. Um, and I think that's what this, every song that we wrote on Play Dead was about, is trying to find your way mm -hmm. to be more present. Yeah. Um, so here we are. <laughs> 
and we're going to have a good time tonight. That's for sure. Um, so Dave is, is joining you this tour. That's right. And then the end of the year, Christmas time. What, what's next for you and for the band? Quite honestly, I don't know. Um, and I'm trying not to think too much about it. I mean, I'm, I'll always be creating music and making, you know, that's obviously uh, my passion, what I love to do. As far as within the confines of Mute Math, um, actually, I don't think that's up to me. Um, I think it's mainly up to the fans. And I know that as long as people are interested mm -hmm. in it, I'll go. I'll go to my last breath because I, I love yeah. uh, what we do in this band. And I think it's, I think it's up to everyone else. Um, and as long as everyone's interested or, or they're enjoying this new iteration of Mute Math, we'll keep it going. So we should all comment under the, 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 the videos on your YouTube channel or Facebook. <laughs> uh, yeah, we should, yeah. We should At let the end you know. of the year, we're gonna just pull all the comments, <laughs> see what columns they follow. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. do a, a diagnostic. No, but I, I think mainly it'll be a feeling. I think it'll be within the band too. However, you know, is everyone feel invigorated to, to keep pushing? And But no matter what happens, then we are determined to have a great time with what we have for this next eight weeks that we're on tour and while we get to play music together. Um, and that's the main focus right yeah. now. Yeah. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here and have a great time in, uh, in, uh, in the Netherlands. And I hope nobody will, you know, Start about your uh, gymnastics tonight. <laughs> I've worked on my form though. Oh, I have. really? Yeah. So hopefully it'll be a little better. <laughs> I'm looking it forward. It scarred me. That. It did. Cool. Thank you. Hi, <laughs> right, man. Peace.